politics. I didn't rise to be political, this is personal. A few years ago, I was invited to, do, to speak at the UN General Assembly's special session on anti-Semitism. I told the representatives from the assembled countries that anti-Semitism is the canary in the coal mine, that if there is anti-Semitism in your country, there is hatred that will ultimately permeate throughout society if it is not checked. I never thought I would need to explain that to my colleagues. This is not political. No one should make it political. The use of anti-Semitic language and images can never be tolerated. When a presidential campaign runs a commercial alleging a Jewish global conspiracy in an ad featuring George Soros, Lord, uh, Lloyd Blankfein, and Janet Yellen, it is invoking classic anti-Semitic tropes and it must be condemned. And when the same campaign tweets an image of their opponent featuring a Jewish star and piles of money, it does the same thing and it must be condemned. And when one of our colleagues accuses Soros, Steyer, and Bloomberg of buying the election, it also invokes classic anti-Semitism. That must be condemned. And when one of our colleagues invokes the classic anti-Semitic tropes, the anti-Semitic language, that Jews control the world, that Jews care only about money, that Jews cannot be loyal Americans if they also support Israel, this too must be condemned. We have the opportunity to condemn all of that, by all of them, intolerable as it all is, by passing a strong condemnation of anti-Semitism. My colleagues, because of anti-Semitism over millennia, millions of Jews have been hated, targeted, expelled from their countries, violently attacked, killed, and exterminated. Words lead to action and to death. There is too much hatred, too many other people who are targeted, and we need to support all of them. But we are having this debate because of the language of one of our colleagues. Language that suggests that Jews like me, who serve in the United States in Congress, and whose father earned a Purple Heart fighting the Nazis in the Battle of the Bulge, that we are not loyal Americans? Why are we unable to singularly condemn anti-Semitism? Why can't we call out anti-Semitism and show that we've learned the lessons of history? It feels like we're only able to call the use of anti-Semitic language by a colleague of ours, any colleague of ours, if we're addressing all forms of hatred. And it feels like we can't say it's anti-Semitism unless everyone agrees that it's anti-Semitism. Who gets to define what counts as stereotypes and discrimination? Isn't it the people who experience the bias? The people who have experienced that hatred for thousands of years? If Jews whose families were persecuted or attacked or killed are talking about how anti-Semitic words can lead at their most hateful and violent extremes, then it's anti-Semitism. And take my word for it. If you don't do that, then please understand that an anti-Semite will hear those words as a dog whistle. What's been so difficult for so many people in my community is that people who are fearful when anti-Semitic tropes are used are being told that they're wrong. Jewish elected officials are saying that this history that we know well is invoked by referencing dual loyalty and some of my colleagues are saying that it doesn't matter what that history means to me. It is intensely personal because it is ongoing. In Europe, in Asia, in the Middle East, in South America, and in the United States, 11 people were killed less than six months ago in a synagogue because they're Jews. What's happening in our country should alarm us all. The attacks on our colleagues because they are Muslim or African American or Hispanic or members of the LGBT community, any attack must, must be condemned when it's based on hatred. But when a colleague invokes classic anti-Semitic lies three times, then this body must condemn that anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is worthy of being taken seriously on its own. It's worthy of being singularly called out. Jews control the world. Jews care only about money. Jews have dual loyalty and can't be patriotic members of the country in which they live. Words matter. For generations, they have had dangerous consequences for me, for my family, and for my people. This shouldn't be so hard. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the chair declares the House in recess until noon today.